It's Gospel Sunday TV with Keith Solis. Hey, thanks for watching Gospel Sunday TV. So if the songs hold on, uh, I trust you mean anything to you, then you definitely know who my guest is. The one and only James Fortune. What's up, hey, How are you? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. Man, good to be here. Thank you for being here. Yeah, those songs, man, I'm telling you, certainly for me, I trust you. When that came out, I was in a season that, man, I really needed that song. So wow. thank you for that song. Where did that come from uh, as far as you're concerned? Do you know, it's amazing that a, a song that has been a blessing to so many people, and me included, came mm -hmm. at one of the lowest seasons of my life. When wow. I was homeless, I didn't have a job, didn't have a way to provide for my family. Uh, all I could do was trust God. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's where the song would say, hey, God, I trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it. You know, that's why I say I got more bills than money. I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. I don't yeah. know how I'm going to provide for my family. But, God, I just trust you. And that really helped pull me out of that dark place because uh, mentally I was in a place of depression and, wow. and just really feeling like there was no way out, no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but that song, it ministered to me when God gave it to me. And then the CI has ministered to so many people like you. It's just, every time I hear it, it's a blessing. And it's a lot of times you, you when you go through a situation, you're thinking, why am I going through this? Not knowing that on the other side, your situation is going to help so many other people who may be going through the same thing or, or or even something worse. Yeah, and I think that's why that song has been so impactful or powerful because, you know, what comes from the heart reaches the heart. That was a place that I was really in. Like, I was writing it, not at a time when there was money in the bank or yeah. I was balling and shot calling. Yeah. I was going through, you know, wow. not knowing where the next meal was coming from. Uh, so to write in that place and then other people who find themselves in their own storms. I mean, ladies and people have shared how they played that song at their child's funeral. Wow. to help them get through that you know losing a child or, yeah. so it has been so many testimonies all over the world and it just reminds me of we got to trust god because you never know what he's doing even in those dark deep situations that we're going through wow now also the song hold on now you did this song with Monica and Fred Hammond. Yeah. And which is a great song, by thank the way. You, thank you. Uh, but y'all weren't even together when you did the song. No, I, I had sung at Monica's wedding. Uh, uh -huh. Her and Shannon Brown had got married, and uh, we sung at the wedding. And so she was like, hey, you know, bro, I appreciate that. We became good friends from that point on. She said, if you ever get a song you want me to do, send it to me. We'll do it. So I wrote Hold On. I sent it to her. She loved it. She recorded it in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I had been on Fred Hammond's album. So he asked me, hey, if you ever get a song for me, send it to me. I'll return the favor. So after Monica, recorded I sent it to Fred in Dallas he recorded it then I did my part in Houston wow. so we were never three in the same room wow. when we recorded that song and that was my first Grammy nomination really? so, so yeah that was a blessing and, and, and technology. definitely well deserved man a great song now who else do your favorites to <laughs> <You're gonna, laughs> I know right? a lot of folks on, on, on the stuff yeah well man let's talk about this new project dream again yeah and it is already blessing folks with the song I Am. Yeah, I Am already uh, top 10, higher than top 10 on Billboard right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just, it, it takes our focuses off what we, you know, our focus off of what we don't have and allow us to focus on God. He is the I Am, the yeah. great I Am. He's whatever we need him to be. So sometimes we get, we get, we get down because somebody walks out or we get down because we lose a job. Well, that job is not our source. That's just a resource. Mm. The I Am is really our true source. Yeah. And so when you understand who he is, he's your healer, whatever you need him to be, the song says he's whoever you need him to be uh god you're the i am you are wow anybody who will google james fortune not only will see all of these incredible songs and albums and books yeah uh but you know some things that you went through a few years ago yeah and yeah. so it's just it's no secret you in fact you're really transparent about it mm -hmm. how are you doing today doing great you know five years ago that that was um that was something I never saw myself ever dealing with, you know, mm -hmm. which is what most men uh, who get caught in, in, in uh, situations of abusive relationships say. Yeah. You know, I did yeah. group therapy, I did individual therapy and counseling. A lot of the same stories were, yeah, I had a controlling problem, but I never saw it, you know, going as far as it did. So uh, to go through the therapy, to get the help, uh, to get the counseling that I needed uh, to help me understand really who I, more about who I was and where the mm -hmm. issue really came from, where it stemmed from, helped me get to the place where I am today. Five years later, uh, I'm still in therapy. Therapy, still in counseling just on maintenance and just mental health generally not yeah. just not just about abusive relationship but just for my own mental health because it's still you know one thing about social media you know Keith is that they never let anything live down so mm -hmm. any given day you know it, it affects my kids because they you know they'll go on the kids page they'll say this and so I still have to make sure that my mind uh, is still you know my mental health is, is healthy yeah. and that I'm you know just staying on the right path now you are uh, uh, still a newlywed. Yeah. How many yeah. years? Yeah. Oh, one. One, one year. year. So just one year. Yeah, one year. Uh, things that went through or, or, or went on in your first marriage. How are you? Uh, 
helping to not have that happen in this marriage? Well, the number one thing is control. Okay. Uh, see, uh, uh, domestic violence, abusive relationships at any level is really about power and control. It's okay. not so much about anger. That's why you can control a person just through manipulation, mm -hmm. without ever raising your voice, just through different games and tactics that you can play to control that person. Silent treatment is a form of control. Mm -hmm. So understanding that I can't control my spouse, I shouldn't want to control my spouse, but the only person I can really control is me. And okay. if you want control, if you want that power, give it away. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to be in control. You know, I don't have to, uh, everything doesn't have to go my way. And so when you do that, because one of the things I learned is that control can really be like a drug. Mm -hmm. So like when you're, when you're in control, you're at peace. When you're not in control or when things are out of your control, you can actually get anxiety just because wow. you're not in control. Controlling is really um, the, the issue that I had to deal with. And so understanding that, you know, helping my wife who I'm with now understand that since she knows everything about my past, talked about it, uh, we went through therapy together as a mm -hmm. couple, understanding what some of the stuff she has to go through. Because I knew when I posted, immediately people were going to go to her page and, girl, he probably this, you know, all of that. Yeah. So we were well prepared for it. Uh, and that's why we've been able to just thrive just in such a way right now. Wow. Well, man, I'm glad that you are transparent about it. Because a lot of times we go through things, and especially when it's something maybe of our own doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and we just want to keep that, you know, between us and, and Jesus. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, so the yeah. fact that you're doing this, I think it's probably helping a lot of men as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. And, and, and of course, you know, helping you. Uh, you know, get through it. and Keith, the most surprising thing was because it was initially I did it to help men. I've been to prisons. I've been to jail speaking about it. But I've had more women come and say, you know what? Your transparency really helped me because I wow. thought the abuse that I went through was my fault. That mm -hmm. I had did something wrong. Or yeah. If I hadn't did this, maybe he wouldn't do this. But when I explained to them that abuse is not a mistake, but it's a decision. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, a mistake is something that's done accidentally. Uh, when abusive, a pattern of abuse is not a mistake. It's a decision. It's wow. a choice. Wow. And so there's nothing that the woman could have done. It's not your fault, you know, because mm -hmm. women hold on to that for years, feeling like their family broke up because of them and what they did to make the guy angry and make the person mad. And it has nothing to do with that when you really understand what the wow. root cause of it is. Well, I know that your hometown, you live in Houston, but you've got a new assignment in Birmingham. Yeah, Dude, Birmingham. What's going on in Birmingham? Listen, I'm going to Birmingham. I'm, I'm already pretty much there. Uh, but as the uh, creative pastor for Rock City Church, where wow. Pastor Mike McClure okay. uh, is the pastor, man, having a chance to work uh, with all the arts, the worship, the band, uh, just all the different departments in the church on just creativity, wow. and, you know, bringing more creativity to the experience, to how we approach ministry as a whole. So excited about that, man. I've been in Houston. Uh, all 40 years of my life okay. except for uh, two years of college i went to california state so this is new for me but i'm excited about this new assignment this new challenge and uh man, i'm really ready to just see what god has in this situation we'll talk about just the different styles because you know anybody who's grown up in church especially a traditional situation you know you just have that tradition but yeah. what are some of the things as we are in this new uh, time in 2019 mm -hmm. uh, that the church can do and not saying that the word needs to change because the word's always going to be the word the yeah. word of god never changes but in terms of our style of delivery in yeah. a worship service well you know i think it's understanding how you know, um, the sons of Issachar in the Bible, it says they understood the times. Mm -hmm. They knew the times that they were in. So, you know, even uh, for us as the label and the Kaya's here with me with E1, we have to approach how we deliver music to people. You know, it used to be cassettes or albums or now CDs are even going away now. Mm -hmm. So in understanding that it's not the, 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 the gift, the gift stays the same, mm -hmm. but the wrapping, the paper, the package wow. can be different. The message never changes about Jesus Christ, but how we present it, the packaging that we put it in, that does some Sometimes changes. If you want to be biblical, Jesus didn't heal everyone that he healed the same way. Hmm. You know, he didn't use the same method because he never wanted us to be tied to a method more than we were tied to the Messiah. So he did it this way one time and he did, did it another way this time. So we may change the method, but the message will always be the same. Amen. Well, man, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming through with this message right here. Dream Again, it's the uh, the new project. It's still on CD, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Barely. This might be the last, this is the last, see, this is the last one. Because <laughs> I can't sign the iTunes. I can sign that. Can't sign Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> but get it it will definitely bless you the new song is i am man i appreciate man, you no thank you for this time i no. appreciate you Keith. thank you for coming through it's james fortune now, how can we find you on uh social media social media is mr james fortune is mr james fortune on twitter and instagram and on facebook the official james fortune page officially officially there that's me it's james fortune right here and i'm keith solis thanks for watching gospel sunday tv thanks for watching gospel sunday tv we'd like to know what you think subscribe comment and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and also visit us at krnb.com.